working. In all the hustle and bustle of getting here and getting ready for worship, I invite you to take some time now to settle in to what we're about to do, which is our Christmas Eve service. And we'll take some time to prepare our hearts and minds by listening to our prelude. And so please enjoy this prelude as we prepare for worship. Welcome to Lord of Life Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Halcyon, and it is my honor to serve here as the pastor. I'm so glad that you could join us tonight for our candlelight service. Whether you are here in this room or joining us online, it is good for us to gather together to worship our Savior. The, e the service this evening is projected on the screens up in the front. Whenever you see yellow, that's the person who's leading's part, and the white is your part, so you're invited to join in whenever you see the white text at the front. If you are in the back, where it gets a little bit harder to see, we have printed some bulletins that are back there for you, uh, and we encourage you to share with your neighbor tonight so that everyone can see what's happening. Children are welcome in our worship services exactly as children are. That means they are welcome with all of their energy and questions and voices, and we are so thrilled that you are here with us tonight. There will be several times when children are invited forward during the service. When we light the Advent wreath, children will be invited forward so they can see better. 
we have three baptisms tonight. And when we have the baptisms, the children are invited to come sit here in the front so that they can see what's happening with the baptism. And then uh, we will have one spot where the children will be invited up to sing the first verse of the first Noel. And so if you know that verse and you want to join us, all kids are welcome. It can be really hard to come up in front of people when you don't know them. So if you want to come sing the first Noel, but you're a little scared, just bring your favorite adult with you and they can help us sing it too. And we will join together in praising God. I want to expend, extend a special thank you to everyone who works so hard to make worship happen tonight. For Katie, who works behind the scenes, to Suzanne, who's providing music, to our many, many special musical groups who are working on this, to Nathan, who makes it so that we can see and hear both in this room and on our live stream, and for everyone who tonight who is greeting, reading, helping with communion, and the many, many tasks that it takes to help us worship. We will begin our worship tonight with a call to worship, followed by singing. I invite you to stand as we begin worship together. Thank you. There is room for you here if you are weary and worn or hopeful and patient. If, you, if you're new to this place or have been here before, there is room for you here. The angels are singing. Be not the angels are singing. With news and great joy. So come in, come in. You may be seated. We continue our worship service with our confession. Loving Christ, scripture tells us that you were placed in a manger among livestock and hay because there was no place in the guest room. Scriptures tell us that the shepherds arrived from the fields beyond town. Scripture tells us that Mary pondered what the shepherds had to say. 
Too often we assume there is no more room. to build hostility here. We want to build your promised day. Guide us forward with hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Friends, the angel said, Do, be not afraid, but they also say, unto you a child is born. Christ is born for you. Christ walked this earth for you. Christ forgives you. That's what love does. It makes room. It offers grace, it learns your name. So repeat these words of hope after me. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us grace is given. Unto us grace is given. May this good news change the very fabric of our lives. Christ has made room for all of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for providing that music for us. We pray together our prayer of the day. We have heard this story before, the story of a star in the sky and a baby laid in a manger. We have heard this story before, passed down in hopeful whispers through the generations. So this night, as we lean our hearts and our ears close to you, we ask that you make room in our souls to hear this story again. Make room in us for awe. Make room in us for wonder. Make room for heartache and compassion. Make room in our hearts for you. Pull us into the narrative that we might hear the truth in this ancient words as if it was the first time. 
for we know that you are still speaking. So speak to us again this night. We are listening. Amen. We will now light our Advent wreath. So if there are any children who'd like to see a little bit closer, they are invited to come up so that they can see what's happening in worship. And you can from any of those. <laughs> All right. Perfect. We're going to light it right over here, so make sure you can see this wreath. Wonderful. Got a couple more still coming up. All right. How does a weary world hold on to hope, practice peace, spread joy, or know love? How does a weary world combat cruelty? How does a weary world shine a light into our bleakest night? God is near. Love has drawn close. Rejoice, for God loves this weary world. Amen. Amen. The next part of our service is a really exciting part for us. It's the sacrament of holy baptism. We get to see three new people get baptized into God's love. So I invite the kids to stay right here and turn to look. And I invite our family to come up for the baptisms. Is there a better night to celebrate the holy sacrament of baptism than tonight? When we remember Jesus as a child in the manger, we bring children forward to affirm faith and baptize them into this love. So tonight we get to baptize Carter, Cody, and Oliver in holy baptism. Now, some of you might know this, some of you might not. I have an identical twin sister. And tonight, I'm going to baptize identical twins. So I cannot get this wrong. I have to check first and make sure I know which one is which. Who do we have here? This is Carter. This is, we've got Carter first, and then this is Cody, and then Oliver will be last. All right. So God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivered us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all in baptism in the body of Christ, anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So I ask the sponsors to present those to be baptized. So you'll just say their, say their names. Who are we presenting to be baptized? Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace of God, I ask the parents, do you desire to have Carter, Cody, and Oliver baptized into Christ? As you bring Carter, Cody, and Oliver to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the creeds, and the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scripture, and nurture them in faith and prayer, so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. I ask the parents, do you promise to help Carter, Cody, and Oliver to grow in the Christian faith and life? And now I ask the sponsors, do you promise to nurture these children in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? I do. And now I ask the assembly, people of God, do you promise to support Carter, Cody, and Oliver and to pray for them in their new life in Christ? I will now ask the assembly to stand I 
I ask the parents and the sponsors to profess their faith. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? And now I'll ask all of us to profess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The assembly may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and raise us to new life with you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given the honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. All right. Now is the fun part. So we have Carter up first. So if you'll just lean him over the bowl. Carter, I baptize you. Yeah, you can touch that. That's fine. Yeah. It's your baptism. I baptize you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son. And we're getting some baptism happening over here, too. And in the Holy Spirit. Here you go. This isn't what I signed up for, I don't think. Cody, your turn. This will be fun. Cody, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All done. All done. Look at Oliver's face, everybody. <laughs> he thinks he's next. Here we go, Oliver. Are you ready, buddy? Oliver, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job. And now I'm, I'm almost done, boys, I promise. We just have a few more things to do. In tradition with the Lutheran faith, we will now make the sign of the cross on their forehead, and we will remind them that you are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit. This baptismal candle that we light on our high holidays is also a reminder to us to go out into the world with our own light. And so each of these boys gets their own baptismal candle. <coughs> and will you turn the page for me? <laughs> Thank you. May your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Amen. 
All right, I will send you all back to your seats. You made it. Good job, everybody. Yep, and then, and these are also their baptismal certificates. So, and you want to take these boxes for their candles, too? And the next up is the children's sermon. So, kids, if you want to stay here, we have the children's sermon next. All right. Okay. Thank you for coming up, and I'm so glad you got to see a baptism tonight. So much fun. All right. I have a question for you. What is your favorite game to play? What's your favorite game? Yeah. All right, robots. Minecraft. Sonic. The Goose Game. The Goose Game, okay. Yeah. Color by number, very nice. As you know, I really like the Goose Game because it has a bunch of Roblox three different games. Three different games. Couldn't choose which one. Now, uh, what's your favorite game to play? Fun. Damien's walking me through the entire way to play this game that I've never heard of. So one more. Soccer. Candyland. All right. Well, when I was growing up, does anyone know what my favorite game was? Monopoly. I have a funny story about that, for, but not right now. Uh, can you get a little competitive? What other, what do you think my favorite game might have been? My favorite game was hide and seek. Anybody else like hide and seek? Any, anybody else like hide and seek? Well, okay, now there's a lot of people here tonight, so I'm going to ask you not to run too fast. What do I have here? What do you think this is? of the Christmas story. Yeah, exactly, this is an ornament. Now, I've hidden several around this room. Now, they're out in plain sight. So if you have special instructions, not yet. They're out in plain sight. So I want you to go see if you can find any of these ornaments and then bring them back. Can you see any? Can you see any ornaments that are like this? You found one. Good job. You found another one. Good job. You can hold on to that for a minute. Oh, there we go. And then you can hold on to that. And then everyone back up to the front in five, four, three, two. Everyone back up to the front. It's okay if you didn't find one yet. You can have a seat again. That's okay. You find, raise your hand if you found an ornament. Okay. Raise your hand if you found more than one ornament. More than two ornaments. I think three is our top one. Okay. Was that um, easy or hard? Easy. easy. Those were just right out there. If this, oh my gosh, if this was, if this was hide and seek, this game would have been over so fast, right? Yeah. But now, you didn't find all of them. You did. There are a lot more out there. Now wait, because you wouldn't have been able to see them. If you have an ornament, please stay seated, because we're going to let people who don't have one go grab one. If you have an ornament, would you please hold it up? <gasps> Look! Look, if you don't have an ornament yet, go look for an ornament from someone holding it up. And go look for one. Oh, good. Oh, look, there's one all the way back there if you don't have an ornament yet. And there's one. Good job. All right. Yeah, hold up your ornament if you have it. All right. Okay. Come on back, come on back, come on back. Can everyone stand up and gather right here? Come here, come here. I don't think so, because I didn't put one up there. Okay. Okay, okay. 
I have, I have a secret for you. I have a secret. I have a secret. Who did anyone not get an ornament yet? You here. You go. Did you get one? Cool. Did you get one? Did you? You you have one. Okay. I have a. Nice. Here you go. Here you go. All right. It's okay. I'll grab some more in just a minute. So. How would you have found the ornaments if you hadn't known people were holding them? Do you think you would have found them in people's pockets? Yeah. I, I don't. Like I would, I, that, because that's really random. It's really random. So I want to tell you about something really special. I want to tell you about the worst hide and seek player of all time. Oh, you? No, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. <laughs> The worst, the worst hide and seek player of all time is Jesus. Because if you were to go hide right now, maybe I couldn't find you, or maybe the best one in the group couldn't find you, but Jesus would be with you that whole time. And do you know what Jesus will never do? Hide in a place where you can't find him. Because he always wants to be with you. He always wants to be with you. So but I want you, he one, he, he's, still in, our heart, so it's he's still in our hearts, it's basically impossible, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. tonight, as you listen to the story about Jesus being born, know that he did that so that he could be with you all the time. And Everybody also listen candles. to the music. We're going to light the candles at the end, and I know it's all of our favorite parts. Yeah. Will, you pl will you pray with me? Yeah. Repeat. Yeah. Repeat, yeah. Yeah. repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for being born. Thank you for being born. Thank you for being a terrible, thank you for being a terrible hide and seek player. <laughs> thank you that you're always with me. Thank you that you're always with me. Amen. Amen. If you have an ornament, please go back to your seats. If you don't have an ornament, come see me. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Do you want one? I'll get you one later, okay? There you go. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. There you go. Here you go, bud. Oh, you got one? Okay, great. Perfect. All right, you can have a seat. Thanks, everybody. We will continue our worship service with singing. The scripture tonight is from the first chapter of Luke, beginning with the first verse. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own hometowns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee in Judea to the city of David, 
called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary, with a baby inside, and I wonder what I've done. Holy chosen me now to carry your son. I am waiting in a silent prayer. I am frightened by the load I bear in a world as cold as stone. Must I walk this path alone? Be with me now. Be Do you wonder as you watch my face if a wiser one should
Our second scripture in the reading this evening is from Luke chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. And to give you some context of where we are in the story, there were shepherds in a field nearby. Suddenly the whole heavens were filled with angels proclaiming the birth of Christ. The angels told them where they could find Mary, Joseph, and the new baby Jesus. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to them, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The third reading is from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. The scene. The Magi followed a bright star a great distance to find the newborn Messiah. They wanted to honor this tiny baby who they'd been praying for. So starting with verse 9. 
they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We will now sing the first Noel. So if there are any kids who want to help us sing, please come on up to the front. We'll sing the first verse together. We're going to stand right up here in the front. Anyone who wants to come up. And if you're a little nervous, bring your favorite adult who can sing with you. Yeah, come on up. At the end of this verse, after they sing all of it, then I invite all of you to stand up and join us in singing verses 3 through 5. Wonderful. Thank you for coming up, everyone. All right. Two things to tell you before we get started. One, do you see how far back those chairs go? Yeah. Look at the good waving. Yeah, that's way back there. We want to make sure they hear the first verse, too. And so make sure you sing really loud. And remember that we're going to start with the first Noel the angel did say. All right. Are you all ready? Yeah. Let's sing. We'll do a little intro here and off we go. You may be seated. What is something that you remember about Christmas Eve services you've been to in the past? What is something you remember? Anyone? 
Candles. I saw some other people holding their candles up. Who is excited about singing Silent Night and having candles? There's a lot of reasons to be excited about that. One, you get to hold a candle. Two, it's a great song. So we have that strong memory. What else do you remember about Christmas Eve worship services? What else do you remember? Anything from when you were growing up or Ben? What's something you remember? What was that? Late at night, it's dark out, which is a different than our normal worship services. Yup, that's special. What else? Yes, so friends and family, and especially in a place where there's so much to travel and see, it's easy to miss each other at church, right? And you get to see people you haven't seen in a long time, and your family gathers. What else do you remember from Christmas Eve services? What do you remember? We get to sing special Christmas songs. And for some of you, you might be remembering hearing Lisa sing Breath of Heaven before and looking forward to that. And we get to sing other Christmas carols. What are some other things you remember? What do you remember? The story of his birth is always told. And it's familiar and comforting and so good to hear every year, right? Anything else that you remember? From Christmas Eve worship services? Anything else? What's something you remember? I bet it's singing. You love to sing all those special songs. What did we not say? What are we doing right now? <laughs> Listening to a sermon on Christmas Eve. No one said it. Let's be honest. Did it come to anyone's mind? Anyone? No. And so earlier this week, I'm working on this sermon, and I'm trying to figure out how to make this, how to give you something really profound so that maybe you would remember the sermon from Christmas Eve. Profound? Something new and different so that you would go home and you would think, Pastor Halcyon said this about Christmas Eve, and it was so different and so new and so life-changing that I'm going to remember it for the rest of my Christmas Eves. You're just, I'm just setting myself up to fail. If that's my goal, is to give you something new. Theologians have been trying to come up with something new to say about Christmas Eve so that you'll remember it and remember what this gift means to you since we've started preaching Christmas Eve services. I just had to be honest with myself that it's unlikely that I will come up with something new that you've never, ever heard before and that will stick with you. But then I realized it's not the sermon that's going to stick with you tonight. Hopefully on some Sundays it does. But not tonight. Because tonight the things that are going to stick in your heads are the ways that you tell the story. To hear those readings again. To sing the songs that reinforce what we're hearing. To be with our friends and our family having communion and celebrating baptisms and playing a kind of strange version of hide and seek You'll remember that. And that's what's important tonight, is that when you sing Silent Night, that it reminds you of the peace that God gives us in the midst of a really chaotic world. And that when we come forward and receive communion and everyone's welcome, that you are reminded that Christ came into this world so that you would know that you are welcome exactly the way that you are at this table to receive the gifts of mercy and grace. There's many ways that we're hearing the story tonight in almost every single part of worship. And when you think back on this night, I hope what you remember is how it feels to be in the presence of God who we have come to worship how it feels to be a community of faith singing strong and loudly together and how that informs how we interact with the rest of the world. Because to feel this hope 
and peace and to know the promises of God changes us. So in ending, I'll just say, I hope that you really enjoy all of those pieces and that you put it firmly in your memory and you let it inform you about how we live in this world and what God means for you. Amen. Please stand as we sing Good Christian Friends Rejoice. prayers. Perfect. Yep. We gather together tonight to pray. God, we have been waiting a long time for this night, for the joy and quiet of Christmas Eve, for the sound of angel chorus, for the old familiar songs. We have been longing for peace and hope of this night, and now we are finally here. So we bow our heads, we offer you our most earnest and honest prayers, trusting again that you meet us where we are. So tonight, God, we thank you for the things in our lives that spark joy. Thank you for the gift of family recipes and crowded tables. Thank you for a slower schedule as many approach vacation. Thank you for infusing this season with practices of generosity. Thank you for the bells and the songs and the candles in the windows. Thank you for children who squeal with joy and the neighbors who drop off cookies. Thank you for every ounce of beauty that marks this season. It has made it possible for us to join our voices with the chorus, with the angel chorus. We know God, even in the face of remarkable joy, we still bring weary and worried hearts to you this night because we know that many have an empty seat at the table this year. We know that many will celebrate Christmas from a hospital room. We know that many have crunched numbers over and over again to see if they can afford a gift. We know that for far too many, the holidays are a reminder that the world is not as it should be. So in between our joy and our weariness, God, we ask you to remind us of your presence wherever we are. We thank you that over the past weeks we have learned that weariness does not win, but that through acknowledging weariness, seeking and building connections with one another, recognizing awe and running to the manger when we hear the good news, that tonight we get to stand in awe of all that you have done. Amen.
will now collect our offering. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. You guys can grab them in a minute, but they're just going to be right there. Perfect. Thank you. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to God who came to earth to be with us tonight. And we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered together by our Lord, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be our name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Jesus was born into a world that loves to turn people away, a world that would shut doors and close hearts, a world that, says, that loves to say, there is no room for you. Friends, tonight that will not happen to you here because Jesus spent his life making room. He made room for tax collectors and children. He made room for 5,000 people to sit down and eat together. He made room for Samaritan women, Jews, and Gentiles. He made room for the sick, the outcast, and the unclean. Jesus is always pulling up a seat, saving space, and making room for people. And tonight, he has made room for you. You may be seated. Tonight, as we commune together, all are welcome to come forward to receive communion. As you come forward, I will be standing in front of the baptismal font, and you'll receive bread there. Our bread tonight does have gluten in it, so if you require a gluten-free option, we have that as well. Please let me know when you come up if that's something that you need. We commune children as young as they are ready to commune, as, co as talked about with their parents and their pastor. If your child receives communion, I am happy to provide communion for them tonight. If your child is not yet receiving communion, I'm happy to offer a blessing for them. Just let me know if your child is receiving communion or not when you come up. After you receive the bread at the front from me, you'll proceed to one or to the side that makes the most sense for where you are sitting. I'll leave that up to you. Um, and so then you'll receive either wine or grape juice in the small cups. The grape juice is white around the outside edge. The wine is red in the middle. And then there will be a basket to dispose of your cup at the end of that line held by two of our children of the congregation. If you do not want to receive communion tonight, you do not have to, but you are welcome to come forward to the table and receive a blessing. If you would rather have a blessing than communion, simply put your hands over your heart when you come up, or you're welcome to remain in your seats. We also have pre-packaged elements as well. Uh, so come to this table. Come with your faith and your doubt. Come with your questions and your hopes. Come with your grief and your love. Just come, because there is room for you here. This is Christ's table. All are welcome.
please rise as you are able. Receive the blessing, and then we'll do our favorite part. May you trust in the promises of this night that God has come to be with us with the knowledge of this truth. Know this gift is for you too. God loves you so much that there is nothing that can separate you from God. You are beloved. And now for our final hymn, we'll sing Silent Night. As we bring the candles out to be lit, remember to tip the unlit candle towards the lit candle and watch your neighbor's hair. And we will all sing together Silent Night. Can I borrow this? Thank you. Ready?
May you go out in peace into the weary world carrying hope. Amen. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim the good news.